The sermon for uh, this Ascension Day is based on the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 to 53. Uh, the sermon is entitled, With Great Joy. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Airports. One of my least favorite places to go. I hear some chuckles, so I guess you agree. Aside from the usual hiccups, such as traffic and smog, the jet smog is always more smelly, busyness, congestion, airports, well, they're a difficult place to go. But I think even furthermore, airports to me are even more difficult because they always remind me that it's a time to say goodbye. I know that when we are flying to one place to another, it seems that every time we would ascend into the clouds on that airplane, I would look down at the city and say goodbye until next time. And I know as a child, it was so difficult to say goodbye. It saddened me greatly, I think, I know I'm going to say this on if my brother hears this sermon. When he went to college, when I was in elementary school, um, I was greatly saddened. I missed him dearly. Um, it was hard to see him leave. And as an elementary school student, I just didn't know how to come to grips with him leaving uh, to go to school in Florida, of all places. But also, even as uh, my ancestors and my wife's ancestors are all from South Korea, every time either they come here or we go there, we know there's always going to be a time for goodbye. And it's never, never easy. I think for all of us, we can all agree that goodbyes are indeed never easy because it presents an end to a time where now distance separates one from the other. It seems that now in that departure, there is a vacancy in life. And that usually isn't filled with great joy. Now the disciples knew this far too well. It seemed as they saw Jesus being taken away from them, as the world was taking away their king, betrayed in the hands of men, the crucifixion nailed to the cross, the jeers of the crowds, crucify him, crucify him. It is in those very words that they knew or they thought they were saying goodbye to their Messiah, their King. Yes, it was very well known that Jesus taught them that he would raise his life up again. But in great grief, there they were in the upper room in great fear of the Jews, believing that they might be next with that door locked, wondering what would happen happened, that goodbye definitely brought great terror to their hearts and minds. But Jesus fulfills his promise, and soon thereafter, he comes to bring the words of peace. His hands, his feet, the marks on his hands, the, the marks on his side, there he says, I'm back. Peace be with you. I am back and I told you so and I am here and therefore there is no need to be in fear because I have brought peace. What a great significant time this was and for those 40 days as he was there bodily with them, they were told what to do. Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in the, in the name of our Lord to all nations beginning from Jerusalem and you are the witnesses to all of these things. He taught them that by the power of the Holy Spirit they would be called to preach to proclaim, to be witnesses, to preach that law, to give that gospel, repentance and forgiveness for the forgiveness of their sins, all by the power of the Holy Spirit. And now, after 40 days of preparation, 
after teaching and being equipped, being ready for ministry, it was time for Jesus to go, to say goodbye. Again, goodbyes are never easy. Yet this one was finally different. As we see in the book of Acts, while they were gazing up into the heavens, right, the clouds, and just imagine being in their shoes, seeing this Jesus ascending bodily into the clouds, how amazing that would be. There, two men in white robes were standing. They're saying, men of Galilee, why do you stand and look into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So afterwards, hearing these words from the angels, they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they continued in the temple blessing God. The question is, what had changed? Why did they return in great joy? After all, they had just seen their Jesus leave again. Remember, they took great comfort in those words. Why are you looking up in heaven? I will come back the same way that I have left. So there they were in the midst of a goodbye. And that's what this Ascension Day is all about. It's not simply about Jesus ascending into the clouds, but this ascension day shows us that Jesus fulfills all things, right? His death and resurrection, we always talk about that, of course, but what about the ascension? What does that mean for us? That Jesus ascends to the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Jesus shows us that he is the triumphant Savior, the one who brings victory to the world, who ascends to the Father, so he makes a home for us, that in his ascension, we too ascend with him. Eternal life, my friends, is a present possession. The gift of heaven is ours, all given by the ascension of our Lord, who reigns over all things, who fulfills all things and gives you the great joy. This is Jesus. Not only does he ascend, but he sends you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that convicts you of your sin, that shows you the law, but yet also comforts you in his righteousness, giving you that peace and joy, knowing that you're covered by the name of Christ and by his grace. This is given to you in the word and the sacraments, and that is where the Holy Spirit works and we know the spirit works because jesus promised to send the holy spirit in his very ascension and that is why we are here today led by the holy spirit all by that ascension and finally it is jesus who is our great advocate the one who stands in the place for us that in his ascension he is our mediator the one who intercedes for us, the one who hears our prayers, the one who stands before us knowing and giving us the assurance that our sins are indeed forgiven. And this is the reason for our great joy, Jesus over you. See, in the meantime, though, he tells the disciples to do these very things, to witness, to be a beacon of light, to shine the light of Christ to all the world, because everything is built upon the ascension, right? Even being martyred to death, the disciples were faithful even unto death because their joy never changed. That is the life of faith, the faith that awaits for what is to come, knowing that we already have that gift. Not a wonder, not a gaze in the clouds, not a life filled with uncertainty or, or doubt or question marks, but a life that is filled with hope and certainty that in the now, as we live in the now, as we wait for the not yet, we wait in great joy. 
yes, you have joy. But I think for all of us, if, we're, if we want to be honest with ourselves, as we await his return, it is in that meantime, that meantime, right, that waiting time, that we find great difficulty in our flesh. With all the things that we face in the meantime, how difficult it is at times where we struggle, where we hear these great words of joy, but then we look at the circumstances in our life, and sometimes joy is very difficult to fathom. It's in this meantime that we face the constant barrage of temptation, of weakness, emptiness, void, it's during this meantime that sometimes we look at joy and say, how could that be so? What is that joy? So you think as sinners, as we are in this meantime waiting, we look to his promise. You know, Jesus on this ascension is not saying, I'm going to leave you, fend for yourself. Jesus is not saying, here, I'll throw you on this little island and you just figure it out and you survive on your own strength. No, this is not what Jesus is saying. He is saying, I am going to prepare a home for you. I have made you a room because you are my child and there you will ascend too. And what great joy is this that your name is written in the book of life. But yet in the meantime, how easy it is to forget the great significance of the Lord's promise. So much we forget that we think we are all alone in this, that there is no joy, isolated, no help, no protector or guide, and that we are on our own. This is the deception of the devil, my friends. This is the deception of the flesh and the world. But it's in our pilgrimage of faith that this day brings, indeed, great joy. Because Jesus is the one who brings you that joy. Jesus is over you. Death, resurrection, ascension. Jesus is covering you by his grace. He is covering you by his body and blood, the empty tomb, the ascension, which says, I will give you the Holy Spirit. I will give you that great assurance, knowing that you are or you have a seat, a place in my heaven. This is your joy. From death to life, from separation to reconciliation, from lost to now being found, this is your joy given to you. Given, right? Not earned, but given by his grace for you. And now Jesus ascends to show you his authority. To show you not only that he ascends, but as God, as that almighty authority, he is with you right now. Isn't that interesting? That when someone leaves, they are ever so close. That doesn't usually happen in this world, but when Jesus comes and dies and rises and ascends, there he is with you, so close, with you, every step of the way. And therefore, in his promise, we live not in goodbyes. We do not live all alone alone. We don't live with God absent in our lives, but we live knowing that we shall see him again and he is with us every step of the way. Lo, I will be with you until the end of the age. I will leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you because it is in this goodbye that those words are true that we are full of joy because Christ is over us. This is our hope. The blood of Christ, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection, assurance, eternal life, this salvation that he has given, he is indeed, he indeed has rescued us from sin, death, and the power of the devil. 
And it's in this meantime that we live in hope, right? With great joy, not a feeling, not an opinion, not a thought, but an objective truth that joy has been given to us because Jesus is here with us in his body and blood, in the bread and wine, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. And what great medicine this is, living throughout your week and coming here to have that great comfort of God's promise, his joy delivered to you. And thus today on this Ascension Day, knowing that this is not a goodbye, not even a see you later, but it's Jesus saying, I am here with you now. I've prepared a place and I will come back again in bodily form and take you home. And what a great assurance this is, knowing that we do not have to look to the clouds in wonder. Right? But Jesus will come and we will rejoice as he takes us home to his heavenly kingdom. So proceed. Go now in his peace. Go with great joy, knowing that by his word you are filled. By his word you are covered. And it's in this great joy that we proceed in Christ, in his ascension, in which we build. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thanks for listening to the Sunday Sermon from Faith Lutheran Church in Moore Park, California. For more information, visit us on the web at faithmoorpark.com.